Hey guys, I'm Riz Grestar, and welcome back to Ace Academy. So, why welcome back? Because I've already played this! If you would check the link in the description below, it will take you to my playlist on my Riz Reacts channel, on my old Let's Play channel, where you can watch my blind playthrough there. Um, so, why I'm playing this again is Pixel Fade emailed me somewhat recently, um, and they basically said they really appreciated my feedback on Ace Academy when I played it. Um, they they were glad that I liked it, even though it didn't have an ending. <laughs> nah, they were a little snarky about that, but I think playfully so, so I'm gonna be cool with it. Um, and they're basically asking if I can provide some sort of feedback on an ending before they make it official. So I think this is still fairly early in development, and I don't know if it'll come out as like a patch or a DLC. Um, I don't really know how that stuff works too well. I hope that it's nothing you have to pay for. Like, I think that an ending should just be added to the game, uh, free of charge. Um, but hopefully, what we're gonna be doing here is playing through this, having a good time, and then providing some good feedback to Pixel Fade, so that when they finalize it, it'll be awesome, and everyone can enjoy it a little bit more. Um, so with that, let's just jump right into it. Oh, shoot, I have six pages. Alright, so really quickly, uh, some good news and some bad news. So if you watched my playthrough of Ace Academy, you would know that I was unsuccessful in romancing anyone. Um, so I just got the ending where, like, Sho is there to come for you, which was nice. Sho's a good guy. I like him. Um, but uh, since then, since I played that for my channel, I've since also romanced Cowdy and Valerie. And apparently, at some point in time, I must have overwritten my save on my first game. Uh, so I apologize for that. But good news is that now we get to see Cowdy's route. Or the ending to that, at least. Um, so, my bad. But here we are. Um, I skipped ahead to where it starts to get new. So if you watch that, hopefully it won't be boring. But yeah. As I stand there, I suddenly feel so tired. So this is just after um, he goes back to Eagle. And he sees that whole thing from his dad. Um, and I, I took... I got Eagle's core on my flash drive. And I wiped the core. Yeah. As I stand there, I suddenly feel so tired and so lost. Without thinking, I pull out my phone and dial the first name that comes to mind. Hello? Cowdy, can we meet? A few seconds of silence pass. By the way, if I sound weird, I apologize. I might still be a little stuffy. Um, over this weekend, my throat just decided to kill me. So, <laughs> Okay. Where I'm starting to get better. I'm a little surprised she didn't ask me why. She must have sensed the urgency in my voice. At the hangar, but I'd rather not meet here. Can I meet you at your dorm? She hesitates. Okay. Thanks. I'll see you soon. We hang up the phone. As if in a daze, I make my way to Cowdy's dorm. This time, I have no trouble getting past the front desk, and I'm soon knocking on her door. Cowdy flings open the door and looks at me intensely before letting me in. I sit on the couch, and she sits beside me. She sits is just a dangerous combination to have. <laughs> What's going on? You're acting a little strange. Sorry, it's been a long day. There's something I need to tell you. She glances at my clenched hand. Does it have anything to do with that? It's the inflection on that's weird. You get, I mean, you get what I mean? Like, does it have anything to do with that? That seems more like an exasperated thing when she's really asking, does it have anything to do with that? You know, emphasizing the flash drive in my hand. Sweet. Yeah. What is it? Um, and again that, just like, annoyed. I show her the drive. Cowdy gives me a questioning look. It's the data to my core. Why do you have your core's data in your hands? I downloaded it from Eagle. <laughs> Duh. Obviously. But why? I sigh and tell her everything I've learned. She listens quietly, but her expression darkens the longer I talk. That's so... I blink in surprise. It's not often Cowdy's rendered speechless. I know it's a lot to take in at once. That's not it. Well, it is a lot to take in, but... I'm sorry your dad no. put this burden on you. Me too. She then looks sideways at me. But if he had to trust somebody with this decision, I suppose he was right to trust you. I am pretty awesome. So, you agree with my choice? Cowdy nods. It's what I would have done. Your core was way more than just a core. Knowing that, how could you continue to use it in the same way? Besides, we can always find you a new core. 
I'm sure Valerie would enjoy the challenge of building a core from scratch. And you already have some experience in doing that. That's true. Plus, I could help too. I breathe a sigh of relief as a weight is lifted off my shoulders. I hadn't realized just how anxious I'd been about my decision. A part of me continued to wonder if perhaps I'd acted too rashly, but if someone as rational as Cowdy agrees with me, then I know I made the right choice. Yeah, I'm not too worried about finding another core. Cowdy thinks. Although, if you want to get rid of the source data completely, you might want to talk to Valerie. Since she's worked on your core, she might have a copy of Blueprints or something. Like I said, I did Valerie's romance too, and it's true, she does have a copy of all that stuff. Uh, like, if you wipe it in hers, she asks, like, if she has to wipe what she has to, it's fun. Good call. I'll talk to her later. We lapse into silence. Sorry, I guess I'm kind of boring to be around right now. Cowdy shrugs. Better than you acting like a pervert all the time. Right. Was she trying to make a joke? Sorry, I didn't mean to make light of the situation. I smile warmly. No, it's okay. It's exactly what I needed. I glance at her. For once, she looks sympathetic, but her lips are pressed into a thin line. You can't change what's happened in the past, so there's no use dwelling on it. Maybe. There are still so many unanswered questions. I know. It's okay to want to make sense of things, but only if that will help you process what has happened. Closions. She hesitates, then clasps my hand in hers and looks into my eyes. If you want to find answers, I will help you. Really? Yes. Um, I don't remember what I chose when I did my Cowdy playthrough, honestly. But I feel like in this case, you know, I think I probably put it to rest. I feel like I put it to rest because I don't want her to be worried about me, you know? Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to do that again. I smile at her. Cowdy's keeping a brave face for me because she knows I'm vulnerable, but when I look into her eyes, I can see just how worried she is about me. If I go down this hole, who knows if I'll ever be able to crawl out again. I don't want to be someone who is fixated on the past, unable to move forward. Thanks, but I think it's best to leave things as they are. She nods and relaxes slightly. We settle into silence again. Cowdy sneaks glances my way, then gently rests her head on my chest. As I feel her gentle weight against me, my mind clears. Like usual, she makes sense. Whether or not Dad told me doesn't matter now. He's gone, and no amount of speculation can change that. I'm lucky to have found someone to keep me grounded. With Cowdy by my side, there is no mystery we can't solve. Here we go, blushies. I run my fingers through her hair, and she glances up at my touch. Slowly, I close the distance between our lips and kiss her. For once, she doesn't seem surprised or shy away from my touch, but melts into the kiss. As we pull away, I gaze deeply into her eyes. In this moment, I have clarity. It rinses away all my stress and fears. It's okay that I don't have all the answers now, because I'm looking at my future. And it is beautiful. Ah, so this is where it would normally fade, and then we'd get the credits rolling. I think they even still use the same music there. But clearly no credits. Before I know it, it's morning. So yeah, just to transition into what I assume is post-game now. Pale sunlight filters in through the window, shining down on my face. I turn my head away, but it's of little use. The sunlight is still just as bright. But it doesn't feel warm to me. Ah, poor baby. My thoughts wander back to last night. Although talking with Cowdy did make me feel better about things, I still feel anxiety welling in the pit of my stomach. I know I said I wouldn't go looking for answers anymore, but... What if there's something more I could do? Something more I need to do? Dad entrusted me with his research, and now it's in the hands, wrong its, of Eludian Enterprises. But what could I do about that? And should I even do anything? As thoughts continue to buzz about in my head, I let out a long, heavy breath of a sigh. Morning. I tense slightly at her voice, but quickly relax again. 
I almost hadn't registered the weight of her head atop my chest, or her arm around my waist, one of her legs draped over one of mine. I guess there really wasn't much room on the couch. I still get tripped up sometimes when it's just added on to the end of the last message. <laughs> I open my eyes to see fiery hair, and a slight smile crosses my face. I wrap my arm around her shoulders, giving her a gentle squeeze. Good morning, Cowdy. You sleep okay? She gently nods against my chest, letting out a soft breath of her own. Okay, maybe they don't have voice lines yet, which I guess is fair, actually. I did complain a fair bit about voice lines uh, when I first played Three Ace Academy. Um, I mean, again, just like you saw at the beginning, the inflections can be off, like those should be, should have a little bit more direction or better direction, I feel. Um, and sometimes just the lines don't match up with what's actually written. Um, so, fair enough. I actually, I don't blame you. Um, means more reading for me, though. Doesn't sound like you slept too well, though. My smile falters, and she tilts her head back, looking up at me with calm, bright eyes. Still thinking about your core? About your dad? Reluctantly, I nod. I guess I'm just still not sure I did the right thing. Or even if I did, should I keep going? Cowdy almost seems to wince, and my heart sinks a little. Didn't you say you were going to put that behind you? A moment passes, then she tenses up, lifting her head slightly from my chest. Not that you couldn't change your mind, and I'd support you either way. Despite the tension, I can't help but chuckle, gently setting a hand on her head and stroking her hair. Thanks, Cowdy. I really do appreciate it. Don't patronize me! I chuckle again, shaking my head. I'm not, I promise. I really mean it. Thank you. Stretching forward, I dip down and gently kiss her forehead. Her blush remains, but her frown gives way to a faint smile. Oh, I thought the music was done. Well, good. Because I mean it too. I want to help you through this. Cowdy watches me for a few seconds in silence. Then she starts to sit up onto her knees. Actually, I think I know what'll take your mind off of it. Ooh. Oh, yes, please to go on. And off go the pants. Um, we're gonna do... Oh, what? <laughs> I start to set up, too. Yeah? What do you have in mind? Cowdy grins. You'll see. I'm gonna go change. I'll be right back. With that, Cowdy gets off the couch, and I watch as she walks away. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I'll just wait here. Everybody stay calm! And off go the pants. Um, I'll just wait here. We're gonna play this cool. I turn to set my feet on the floor, resting comfortably back against the couch cushions while I wait. I wonder what she's thinking. <laughs> I guess I'll find out soon enough. While I wait for Cowdy to come back, I try to stay relaxed, taking in deep, calming breaths. I let my mind wander to the birdsong outside, picturing them flitting about from tree to tree, riding the wind. It must be nice. <laughs> I snap back to reality. Oh, the ghost gra Gosh dang it, that phrase. Taking a moment before reaching into my pocket and pulling out my phone. I went slightly upon seeing how many unread messages I had. I'm sorry, I'm still like chuckling about that stupid Eminem line. I sorry, I like it. It just triggers me every time. In a good way. Which I guess trigger- Sorry. Tapping the icon to open my inbox. They're from Nikki. Hey big bro, dinner's almost ready, so you should probably hurry your butt home. Wouldn't want it to get cold. Never mind, you took too long and I ate it. <laughs> Just kidding! But Kaito and I are gonna watch a movie. Should we wait for you? Right, because I never went home last night. Did you leave your phone inside Eagle again? Ugh, you're hopeless! But I still love you. <laughs> and finally, the text that just came in. Okay, seriously, please respond. I never saw you get home and your bike's already gone. I know you didn't already wake up and go somewhere. Let me know you're safe, okay? I'm torn between a frown and a smile. I'm glad to know Nikki cared about me enough to be concerned, but I hate making her worry. I really should have texted her before falling asleep, but I guess falling asleep had been an accident anyway. Still, no better time than now to fix my mistake. Hey Nikki, really sorry about that. I stayed over at a friend's house and lost track of time. But don't worry, I'm okay. Excuse me. Another minute passed. <laughs> Ugh, you've got to tell me these things. I was getting so worried about you. 
Jeez, don't scare me like that. <laughs> Reading the text, I can't help but chuckle, lightly shaking my head. I'm really, really sorry, Nikki. I'll try not to let it happen again, I promise. Yeah, you'd better not. Are you coming home soon? I actually think I'm going to hang out with Cowdy a little longer. I press send before I realize what I just let slip, and I wait for the inevitable. Yeah, <laughs> I was just about to say, yep, we're waiting. So, you were sleeping at Cowdy's place, huh? Thankfully, I then hear the sound of Cowdy's bedroom door opening, and I text a quick reply. Nothing happened! Anyway, I've gotta go. I'll see you later today. Love you! Cowdy approaches just as I'm slipping my phone back into my pocket. That's not sexy, but it is cute. I actually really do like that outfit on her. Alright, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Go where? <laughs> Again, she grins. Since you'll be driving, I guess you need to know. We're going to the mall. The mall? Mm-hmm. You do have your bike on campus, right? I nod. Stepping up to the couch, Cowdy bends over to take one of my hands, pulling me up. Then come on, get up. I got dressed for you, you know. I know you did. Thank you. All right, all right, I'm coming. I'd rather the opposite. <laughs> well, um, we're going to be nice and say I know you did thank you. I know, Cowdy. You've been real sweet to me. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever. What are girlfriends for? And no, don't actually answer that. Pervert. <laughs> Let's get going. Leaving Cowdy's dorm room, we start heading toward the parking lot to get my bike. She let go of my hand shortly after we left her room, but that's okay. I'm sure she'll get more comfortable with public displays over time. And if not, that's fine too. Ah, heck yeah. Some nice... Some nice responsibility there, like, yeah, being cool with each other. The walk is uneventful, and before too long, we're at the parking lot. I think respect was more the word I was looking for there, but yeah. As we step into the parking lot, I hear a faint giggle beside me. So, are we still looking for a little girl's bike? <laughs> what, did I never change that? Oh, please, you love it. Ha, ha, ha. Would you rather hit something more manly? I'm not gonna do that one. Ah, uh, we're gonna go with a please. I grin. Dang right. You know you're looking forward to it. What? Riding through the city on a unicorn? It is a majestic beast. The bike is my steed, and you are my princess. Psh, whatever. Um, I'm gonna call her my princess. Mm-hmm. Just a prince, his unicorn, and the prettiest princess in all the land. She laughs, loosely holding my arm. Oh, shut up. You're the dorkiest prince I've ever met. How many princes have you met, exactly? After glancing around, Cowdy stretches up, kissing me on the cheek. I think one's enough for now. <laughs> Aww. With a soft grin, I wrap an arm around her waist and give her another gentle squeeze. Then, I lead her over to my bike. Cowdy climbs on after me, scooting close and wrapping her arms around my waist, her front against my back. I don't say anything, but I can't deny my smile as we start to leave for the mall. Alright, cool. Head to the mall. The day may have started off a little rough, but maybe it won't be so bad after all. Okay, I feel like that's just blatant foreshadowing right there. <laughs> Poor MC, he just doesn't know. After an uneventful ride, we arrive at the mall. We find a place to park my bike, straighten ourselves out, then head inside. Caddy walks beside me as we step into the building, and I turn my attention back to her. And I turn my attention back to her. I mean, I guess either works. It sounds awkward. So, where exactly are we going? Cowdy simply smiles. Be patient. Come on. She starts to walk away, her hands resting casually in her pockets, and I follow after her. I thought that was going to have a period there. It isn't long before I recognize the direction we're going, and soon I can even faintly hear the various beeps and whistles, jingles and chimes. Yeah, it's the arcade! That was right. Well, here we are. Cowdy? At the arcade? Aw, for me? Oh, great. Um, I'm gonna say... I think it's more surprising that she's at the arcade, honestly. I'm curious, at least. I'm doing that. Though she tries to hide it, I can see Cowdy watching me from the corner of her eye, waiting for a reaction. I let out a breath of a chuckle as I let my gaze slowly wander over the room, and I start to nod. 
I'll admit, I never saw you as much of an arcade person. Cowdy scoffs. <laughs> Just say thanks. Looking again at Cowdy, I lean in to steal a quick peck on the cheek. Thank you, Cowdy. You're the best. You're welcome. Now, what do you want to do? Dance, dance, retribution! <laughs> uh, let's find a shooter. I want to see you on a kitty ride. And how about a gear sim? I feel like not a gear sim, because I kind of feel like that's why we're here to get my mind off of that sort of thing. I think seeing her on a kitty ride, while possibly cute, might come across as weird. Um, I don't think she'd be a fan of shooters, so I'm thinking Dan Stan's Retribution. I don't know how much she'd like most of these, but everyone likes the dancing games. Exactly, right? I do, at least. I'm, I suck at them, <laughs> but I enjoy them. How about some DDR? Again, she scoffs, a smirk on her face. Really? I thought you'd pick something else. I just figured it'd be a good game we could play together. Unless... I pause. She pauses, too. Unless what? You're scared. You want to do something else. That's at least nice. It gives you that option. You're scared. I'm totally going to taunt her. Unless you're afraid you're going to lose. Cowdy almost snorts. Oh. Oh, now it's on. <laughs> if you're that, that eager to make a fool of yourself, then come on. Grinning, she glances back at me as she walks off to find a machine. It isn't hard to find one of the games, given its music and colorful, flashing lights, and we step up onto the dance pads. Cowdy starts loading up our credits. Best three of five. You pick the first song, then the loser will pick the next. So I guess you'll probably be choosing the playlist in general. Oh yeah? We'll see about that. With matching grins, we take our positions. May the best dancer win. Cheat! Go easy on her. Uh, may the best dancer win, obviously. This is a fun competition. I know how athletic Cowdy is, and her confidence here didn't seem to be fake. She probably really knows what she's doing. As much as I may care about her, there can only be one Lord of the Dance. I've got to give it my all. The music starts, and the notes begin to scroll up the screen. I stay focused on the display, my feet finding their marks, hitting the arrows as I pass through their hollow counterparts. I'm doing pretty well! Now this is the fight music, isn't it? Isn't this what happens when we're in, like, our gear matches? That's funny to me. But out of the corner of my eye, I see Cowdy doing just as well herself. Eventually, I glance at Cowdy to see a look of determination on her face, her pale skin gaining a tint of red from the exertion. Watching her shift and bounce was distracting. And unfortunately, I paid the price for it. Cowdy won. Letting out a huff of a breath, Cowdy starts to unzip her jacket, casting a smirk my way. So, what song's next? I watch as she shifts out of her hoodie and turns to hang it over the rail behind her, her taunt hardly registering in my mind. Absolutely worth. <laughs> I pick the next song and the game soon begins again. This time around, I stay focused, and it's much closer, but Cowdy still manages a win. We exchange a glance, but neither of us says anything. We both know that one more result like that would render her the victor. As the third song starts to play, a small crowd begins to form behind us, watching us dance. It was a little embarrassing, but a little exhilarating too. With this being my last chance and with an audience starting to assemble, the pressure was on. Thankfully, I tend to thrive under pressure. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, my character in my Cowdy run was the athletic. You know, you get to pick like intuitive, athletic, intelligent, or something like that. He was athletic, so I don't know if that's gonna come into play at all. Soon enough, the third round was mine. By this point, I could tell my face was a little flushed, and that was only reflected in Cowdy's own. I'm catching up! Feeling nervous yet? Tch, please, you got lucky. Well, bad news, princess. I'm feeling lucky again. Oh yeah? Yeah. And if I recall, doesn't the loser pick the next song? Better get to it. A little ooh sounds from the crowd, and Cowdy lets out a scoff- uh, Cowdy lets out another scoff, smirking still. A small flame seems to have lit up in her eyes. Well then, babe, hope you're ready for this next one. I may have won the last round, but one more win for Cowdy and it'd all be over. I couldn't afford to get cocky. I hadn't seen which track Cowdy had selected, but as the music begins to play, I perk up, a smile crossing my face. If she thought she was going to get me with this one, she was wrong. This is my jam. <laughs> Still, that didn't mean it was easy. By this point, it was especially clear that Cowdy knew what she was doing, and I wasn't about to underestimate her. Not when things were so close. In the end, it really came down to just the last few notes. 
with a string of perfects, I stuck the landing, and Cowdy fumbled, however slightly. Still, it was enough to claim the victory that round. As we quietly pant for breath, we turn our heads towards each other, our eyes locking. The crowd behind us had only grown, some cheers and boos sounding out. One more win and this will all be this is all over. You nervous now, princess? Again, with that. Her brow twitched as I emphasized the word. Like heck, babe! <laughs> nervous as heck, huh? Oh shut up! Despite the competitive air of the situation, I can still see the light in her eyes, the faint smirk playing at her lips. Of course she wanted to win. We both did. But I was glad she was having fun, too. Cowdy chooses the next song and we retake our stances, eyes locked onto the screen. Then the music be begins to play and the arrows begin to fly one last time. Excuse me, my throat is all dry. Like I said, apologies, I think I'm still getting over whatever I had this weekend. Our feet tap the arrows in quick, light movements, always seeming to be in motion. My heart pounds in my chest, my breathing heavier from all the exertion of these past few rounds. Behind us, the crowd begins to chant. Princess! Princess! Way to take side! Oh, babe! Babe! Cool! It's split! The louder they grew, the more pumped I became. This was it. Focus! Don't slip up! Trash talk! Go! <laughs> Shove County over for the lulls! Let her win. I'm not gonna let her win, no, we're gonna focus this out. Cowdy is a true athlete. I know she wouldn't want me to go easy on her. She's giving it her all, so it would be disrespectful of me to give it to give it any less myself, yeah. Besides, I really want to win. <laughs> the crowd goes louder as the song nears its end, the music itself getting harder to hear. Finally, as the last few arrows scroll up the screen, Cowdy and I strike our final poses, each landing the ending. The song was over, and we were panting for breath. My gaze trailed up across the screen to my score, then flitted over to Cowdy's, or over to see Cowdy's, then... Babe! Babe is the winner! I'm the winner! I'm Babe! That's me, cause she's princess! <laughs> the crowd bursts into cheers and applause. I look over at Cowdy, meeting eyes with her once more. After a moment, she straightens up, grabbing her jacket and slipping it back on. Then, she extends a hand toward me. Well played. I didn't expect you to be so good at this game. Shake hands, it was well played indeed. Turn to the crowd, are you not entertained? <laughs> Pull Cowdy in and kiss her. Ooh, I'm feeling it in the moment. I reach out and take Cowdy's hand, but I don't shake it. She perks up slightly, but before she can say anything, I pull her in toward me. Holding her hand near my chest, I slip my other arm around her waist and dip my head forward, pressing my lips against hers. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> and then Cowdy pulls back. Uh-oh, look at her face. She punches me in the arm. But the victory still plays on. Don't kiss me in front of people without my permission. Sorry. I'm about to apologize. Oh, I don't. I take that back then. I don't. I'm not sorry, because... When she lets out an exasperated sigh, wrapping her arms around my neck and kissing me again. Relief washes over me, and our time in the spotlight lasts maybe half a minute more before everyone has dispersed. By that point, Cowdy and I have separated, and we step around the rails and back down to the main floor. That was fun. Sorry about that. Why can't I kiss you? Aren't we together? Now, keep in mind that a relationship does not mean that you can do whatever you want. Even if it's just like a hug or a pat on the head, you have to respect your partner's wishes either way. So maybe that was a little bad of me to be like, I was in the moment, I'm gonna kiss her. Um, but, so sorry about that. <laughs> hey, so, uh, sorry about the kiss. I guess I got caught up in the moment. Cowdy rolls her eyes, nodding. You guess? Yeah, I could tell. Thank you. Just ask me next time. I like you, and I like... But that doesn't mean it's always the right time. So just... With a weak smile, I nod too. I understand. That was my bad. I'll ask next time people are around. I promise. So, are we good? Cowdy lets out just a quiet sigh before softly smiling. Yeah, we're good. Thank you for understanding. Yeah, of course, Cowdy. You're welcome. We decide to spend some more time in the arcade, going around and trying some different games together. 
It turns out that while Cowdy's the DDR Pro, she isn't too familiar with a lot of the other games, so I'm happy to show her around and introduce her to some of my favorites. Eventually, though, the growling of our stomachs, why is that possessive, becomes too much to ignore, and we leave the arcade in search of something to eat. Cue outro, go!